Thank you. Welcome to this virtual voting event. CCTC and number of agencies are all things. My name is Brent Belio. I work at the Arc of Shepparton, Fair Creek, and Gilford Counties. I'm a consulting advocate. Don? Thank you so much, Brent. And um, just a couple of things that I want us to think about um, tonight as we are in this event. Um, we will be going over um, how to vote, um, not who to vote for or what issues to vote for. Um, and as we, um, we encourage um, people to, to put questions in, in the chat, we will have a few minutes at the end for people to answer questions. Um, so um, I want to go ahead and introduce Sarah Pell Sticker, um, who is a staff attorney at Disability Law Colorado with and she works with voting rights and young adult advocacy. Thank you for being here. Of course, thank you. I'm excited to be here with all of you and see so many fun, familiar faces too. Um, I am just going to talk through um, kind of some basic voting rights that you have here in Colorado. We'll talk about kind of the logistics of how to vote and that kind of thing. Um, but just wanted to start with the framing conversation so that you know when you're out there kind of what your rights are. Um, and you know what everyone around you's rights are. So um, as John said, I'm Sarah Peelsticker. I'm a disability rights attorney at Disability Law Colorado. I coordinate our vote program. Um, I also do work with youth advocacy, um, but those are, I guess, sometimes separate, sometimes combined issues, but um, right now I've been really focusing on our voting rights work. So, um, uh, just kind of so who you know who I am and who Disability Law Colorado is, we're Colorado's protection and advocacy system. Um, so it's our job to protect and promote the rights of people with disabilities throughout the whole state. And um, we do voting rights work, but we also do work in employment discrimination, transportation, education space, um, you know, access to services from the Division of Vocational Rehab, um, kind of a broad spectrum of work. So um, you know, when I say you can call our office about issues with voting, you absolutely can. But if you have other um, issues that you think would be important for our office, you're welcome to contact us about those as well, too. So what are your voting rights? Um, there are a lot of laws that protect the right to vote um, in our country. So, you know, some that you've heard about, you know, protecting uh, people with disabilities, the Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities. Um, but then there's some on the more local level, and that's kind of what we'll focus on today because uh, Colorado election law really gives people in our state a robust set of rights that don't really, frankly, exist in a lot of other states. Um, so I think we are pretty lucky to live in Colorado and uh, be able to have a lot of these um, these rights. So for example, um, in Colorado, you have the right to vote even if you have a guardian. This is not the case in every state. So if you ever in a find yourself in a different state and you're voting and you have a guardian, you might not be able to vote. But in Colorado, you can. That right is not taken away from you. Some other rights that I think are important to keep in mind, um, you do have the right to vote independently and privately, but you also have the right to have any person that you choose help you vote. So those kind of go hand in hand in my mind. So if you need um, help filling out your ballot or figuring out how to vote, or if somebody has asked you to help them um, figure out 
their ballot or how to vote. You do have the right to have a person help you, um, but if someone is trying to help you that you don't want them, you don't want their help, um, you do have the right to vote independently and privately as well. Um, if you vote in person and you want help filling out your ballot, um, but you didn't bring anyone with you, there is poll workers that will be able to help you vote. So that's important to keep in mind if you um, kind of want maybe a more independent third party person helping you vote, or um, if you just don't have someone that you think would be a good fit to help you vote, you can go to the voting service and polling centers in person and there will be a poll worker who can help you vote. Um, you do have the right in Colorado to vote if you have a felony on your record, as long as the time for the felony has been served. And that really just includes the, the period of, it, of imprisonment. So if you are incarcerated for a felony, then you are ineligible to vote in Colorado. But at any other time in Colorado, specifically, you are able to vote. So if it's on your record, um, or even if you're serving you know, probation or parole as part of your sentence, as soon as you are finished with that term of imprisonment, you get the right to vote back. And that's something that's very unique to Colorado um, and very great. So you also have the right to vote if you're on an involuntary psychiatric hold in Colorado or really hospitalized for anything. So if you find yourself in a hospital for any reason, um, you still retain the right to vote. You also have the right to vote if you don't have a current home base. So this is another thing that can be kind of unique in Colorado. So if you don't have a physical address of an apartment or a house or, or that sort of thing, you don't lose the right to vote in Colorado. You are still able to vote, um, even if you don't currently have a house or a home base. When it comes to accessibility, all voting service and polling centers um, need to be accessible under the ADA standards, and all of them should be completing accessibility surveys prior to the election um, so that there are not accessibility issues um, that you might encounter. I know that can go either way, but they're supposed to be filling this out um, to, you know, kind of ensure that everything is accessible um, and taken care of. They also, every voting service and polling center will have accessible equipment um, that you can access. Um, all registration forms and ballots and other materials, they all need to be made available in formats that are accessible. So if you need to access a ballot or a form in a different format, you have the right to um, be able to access that. Uh, lastly, a thing that's pretty unique to Colorado is that we have an online ballot delivery system. So voters with disabilities um, who need to use online assistive technology or maybe have um, are not, unable to uh, read or fill out a ballot for um, a variety of reasons, you can access the online ballot system and vote that way in Colorado. So if you or anyone you know runs into the issues with any of the rights that I just laid out, um, or any thing of the issues that I mentioned earlier, you can contact our office or me specifically. Um, regarding voting issues, we can potentially provide direct advocacy and filing disability related complaints with the Secretary of State's office um, or the Department of Justice, depending on what the issue is. Um, some examples of issues that you know might warrant a complaint are if you or someone you know encounters architectural or physical barriers to a polling place, um, if there are inaccessible voting machines, if there is a lack of space for mobility, like the pathway is blocked or the voting machines are not in operation, um, if the poll workers don't have you know, the requisite knowledge and training of how to use the accessible equipment, if you encounter discriminatory attitudes or privacy violations or um, you know, a machine is facing the public, that kind of thing. All of those might be examples of um, issues that would be uh, potentially complaint worthy and something that you could absolutely contact our office about um, if you need assistance filing that complaint. So I hope you all get out to vote this year. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll put my contact information in the chat, um, but you can always contact our main office um, and all that information and my email too is on um, our website at disabilitylawco.org. Thank you so much, Sarah, for that invaluable information. And now Robbie will be sharing additional important information with us. Thank you. So my name is Robbie Rapolo. And my pronouns are he, him. 
and I am the Director of Community Outreach at Atlantis Community, and we serve seven counties around the greater metro Denver area. And this evening, I will be talking a little bit about the process to register to vote, how to check to see if you're already registered, and a program called Ballot Tracks. I do have a little PowerPoint presentation that I will be sharing. So the first slide here just uh, talks about how the process of how to register to vote. And uh, primarily, you, you can do that online. There's a link on this slide for uh, vote411.org. And that is where you can register online. And you can also check to see if you are already registered. Um, both of them are pretty uh, pretty seamless processes. And if you're not registered, then there's two options, one of which is the online voter registration website. And you can also vote by downloading and filling out the um, voter registration form, and you can return it and back in, send it in the mail. And the deadline to register by mail or online to vote is Monday, October 28th. And then the deadline if you register and vote in person is on election day, which is Tuesday, November 5th. Excuse me, in this next one, is uh, do I need an identification or an ID to register? And you will need a driver's license or a non-driver state ID to register to vote. You can also use your social security number if you don't have a state ID or a driver's license. And then this is just a list of um, types of uh, IDs that you can use to vote in person. So the, there's a list of them there. It can be your Colorado driver's license, your Colorado state ID, a US passport, a tribal identification issued by a federally recognized tribe. You can also use a student photo ID issued by a higher education institute in Colorado. You can use a military or veterans photo ID, a certified United States naturalization document, certified United States birth certificate, a Medicare or Medicaid card, an employee photo ID that would be issued by the United States, Colorado, or local government. You can also use a pilot's license issued by the United States government. And there is a organization that's called Vote Riders. And there is a link here as well to go to their website. And they provide um, any free assistance to help with assisting to get an ID if you don't have one. and kind of some of the services that they offer. They'll set up appointments and cover the costs. They'll request and pay for any of the documents that you may need to register. They'll figure out what documents you need and how to get the ID. And they'll also go through the process with you to make sure that you have everything that you need in order to vote. And some examples that they can help um, they can help you get documents that show who you are, birth certificate, if there are any name change records, or a naturalization certificate. They can help you get a copy of your social security card, proof of where you live, and they will also provide a free ride to the DMV or social security office, as well as getting your ID. 
if you were going to use this organization, I would suggest that you contact them as soon as possible because it will take some time to get the information together. And this last little slide here, there is a program that's called Ballot Tracks. And what Ballot Tracks does is if you mail your ballot in, this program will notify you when they receive your ballot. They will also notify you if you have to cure your ballot. Uh, maybe there's something missing on there. Maybe you forgot to sign it, or they just have some type of a question on your um, voter, on your ballot. And the big benefit of using this program is so they can notify you if you need to cure your ballot, because if they can't notify you, then your ballot will be destroyed. It will not be counted. And this last slide here is just my contact information. I'll also have my contact information in the chat. And please don't hesitate to reach out and we can definitely provide some support in any ways necessary to also make help make sure that you're ready to vote. And thank you. That is my part. Now, Craig will be sharing. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Craig. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm the community organizer with the Center for People with Disabilities. And hopefully you're able to see my screen right now. And I have a couple of slides. My topic today that we'll be talking about are accessible voting options. And all the information that I'm sharing today comes from the National Coalition on Accessible Voting and directly from the Colorado Secretary of State. And You'll see in the chat, we put the link to a, a, a Google form in there. So if you would like a follow-up email after this event is done with a link to the recording and also the links that we have been talking about and resources that we've been going over throughout tonight's uh, session, please uh, put your email in there so you can make sure to get that follow-up email because there's a lot of good information that we're talking about throughout the evening and especially in my presentation, You'll see there's a lot of clickable links in here that you may want to dive into and research more depending on if that's the accessible voting option that works best for you. So make sure that you uh, submit your email address so you can get that follow-up email. So moving on, first we'll be talking about accessible voting resources. So first of all, it's important to know your rights. As a voter with a disability, you have a right to vote privately and independently at an accessible voting location on an accessible voting system. So organizations that can help with this, with informational resources in addition to your state or local elections office are your local centers for independent living. We have a few on this call tonight and you can reach out to any of us and we can help you get registered to vote and provide resources. Another great contact is the National Disability Rights Network. And you can also call 1-866-OUR-VOTE to report any voting problems. And then other websites for voting information is the Rev Up Voting Guide is really great. Vote Writers, Vote.gov, and Vote411.org all for information about plain language definitions, uh, more on voter ID requirements, and ballot information. So voting features in Colorado for voters with disabilities. We have the options for uh, voters with print disabilities to use an accessible vote by mail system. And it's always important to self be a self-advocate. So it's important to ask your local election office about information in large print, audio or braille versions, curbside or drive up voting options, ballot delivery to your home or ride to the polls program, how to practice using the accessible voting system, emergency voting options if you are hospitalized or ill, how to get assistance voting or other services for voters with disabilities. It's important that if we have any uh, needs or questions that we reach out to our, our county clerks and the secretary of state to ask these questions now ahead of time so that we can make sure that everything is set and organized and make sure that we can get our ballots in on time and that they're counted. 
So now early voting in person is voting in person before election day, which is usually less crowded than going to vote on election day itself. And there are different kinds of early voting. So you can check which option is available for you. These may include vote centers where you can vote at any location in your jurisdiction. There's super polling places where you are assigned a location, uh, voting at an election office or satellite office, and then also in-person absentee, where you go to an election office, get your mail ballot, and then mark and cast it in the office. More early voting in-person information. So starting October 21st through November 5th, early voting is available at vote uh, voter service and polling centers and these centers are open during business hours monday through saturday and then there are other voting events throughout that time period that may have specific times for your county so early voting hours and locations can vary so it's important to check with your local elections office to see where all these locations are and find the most convenient one for you and same day registration is available at designated early voting locations all voters, as Robbie was saying, are asked to show identification, and you can also drop off your ballot at early voting locations as well and update addresses. And you can do that through the Secretary of State's website. This link will be in the follow-up email. And when you get there, you will see a map under county elections offices, and you would just click the county that you're in, and a list of all of the voting locations and vote centers will pop up, and then you can pick the one that's most convenient for you. So next, voting in person on election day. When you vote in person on election day, you go to a vote center to mark and cast your ballot in person. Every in-person voting location is required to have accessible voting systems available. So as Sarah was saying, all of the vote centers and are supposed to be ADA accessible. So we gotta make sure that they are and request the service that you need. And pictured on the screen, we have three images. The first one is sign in, and it's a picture of a hand signing in at a vote center. The second picture is labeled mark your ballot where we have an individual marking their ballot with a ballot marking device and then cast your ballot where we have a person placing their ballot into the ballot box. So more on voting in person on election day, voter service and polling centers will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. All voters are asked to show identification. You can drop off your mail ballot at local election offices on election day. Same day registration is available at all election day locations. And then again, we'll be sharing a link to find your polling location so that you can get your, your vote plan in place well ahead of time so that when it is election day, there aren't any variables that can pop up to make it challenging and make sure that your vote counts because that's really what today is about, participating and having your, vo your voice heard and your vote count. So now we're going to talk a little bit about accessible voting systems for in-person voting. The accessible voting systems used in Colorado are shown below in this slide, and you can always reach out to your local elections office for more information or to practice using the system you will vote on. The first option or the first uh, available one could be the Clear Ballot Clear Access, which is a ballot marking device. It has a touch screen, audio and tactile controls, and a small keypad, and the printed ballot is the same as the hand-marked paper ballot that you would use otherwise, and ballots are cast at a separate scanner. So these links that are below are tutorials about this. And these again will be in the follow-up email where if the clear ballot device is what is at your polling location, you can watch tutorial videos about what it's like to get a better idea of that process. So make sure you uh, give us your email in that form in the chat so that you would get the follow-up email. And then the next option that may be at a voting center is the Dominion ImageCast X, the ICX machine, which again is a ballot marking device. It also utilizes a touchscreen, audio and tactile controls on a small keypad. The ballot is printed out using a separate printer and the printed ballot has a list of the voter selections and a QR code and the ballot is cast on a separate scanner. And again, these links will be in the follow-up email where you can see uh, tutorial videos about what this actually looks like. And the ICX machines is what we use in Boulder County and have the most experience with. So we have a brief little video to kind of give an introduction to it. And then again, in the follow-up information, you can watch the full video to get a better idea of what this technology is like. It's pretty intuitive, but if it's your first time using this, I would recommend doing a little homework ahead of time to make sure that it's the right fit for your needs and that you're prepared on election day so that when you're casting your ballot, you, have, you can be comfortable and low stress and make sure that you're able to focus when needed. 
So this is a 15 minute long video. So we'll just watch a couple minutes of it to get a taste of it and then we'll continue. All voters have the right to use an accessible machine to mark their ballot in the polling place. These machines called voter assist terminals can also be used in the clerk's office to mark absentee voter ballots in the days leading up to an election. The machine must be available and turned on wherever voting is taking place. To use the voter assist terminal, just ask. You do not need to say you have a disability or show any proof of a disability. The ICX voter assist terminal has assistive tools that make it easier for voters with visual, hearing, mobility, or other disabilities to mark their ballots. Voting with this machine involves three steps, marking the ballot with the ICX, printing your ballot, and inserting it into the tabulator. This video will walk you through that process. There you go. And then if you were, to, and that link will be in the follow-up email, so you'll be able to watch the whole video to kind of get more detailed step-by-step -step instructions. And it's a pretty cool device, and we've gotten a lot of great feedback that it works really well and is accessible. So we really encourage everyone to uh, check out that resource if that is an option that uh, would fit your needs. So now moving on to voting by mail. So voting by mail can be an accessible option for voters with disabilities. It lets you vote at home so you can mark, verify, and return a paper ballot privately and independently. Some states have emergency options if you are hospitalized or ill. And voting by mail is called mail and ballot in Colorado. And the deadline to return your ballot is it needs to be received by 7 p.m. on November 5th. And it's important that postmarks don't count. It needs to be received by then. So if you're going to be mailing it back, make sure that there's adequate time so that it arrives or you'll want to drop it off in a ballot drop box or at a vote center. So how do you get your ballot? All active voters are mailed a ballot and you can track your ballot online. I know Robbie spoke about ballot, ballot tracks and that'll be a resource that will also be listed in the follow-up email. And how you can return your ballot, you can by mail, you can at a secure drop box, you can at your local elections office, at any ballot drop off location. And then again, through the follow-up email we'll be sending out or the Secretary of State's website or your local county clerk's website, we'll have a list of local election websites where you can find your nearest drop box. So make sure your ballot counts. Remember to return your ballot promptly. Postmarks don't count. So it needs to be in the hands of the county clerk at 7 p.m. on November 5th. So if needed, make sure there's enough postage on the envelope. Make sure your ballot is sealed in the envelope. Sign the form that is on the envelope. A family member, household member, or caregiver can return your ballot for you. So contact your local elections office for more information. If someone helped you, have them complete the form for assistance. And then a little bit more on accessible vote by mail. So accessible voting by mail allows voters with disabilities to mark a mail-in ballot electronically using their own technology and assistive tools. So to use accessible tools for voting by mail, Typically, voters download an electronic ballot to mark using personal technology, print the ballot and any signature form, seal the ballot in an envelope, return it by mail or to a drop box off locations. Some states allow electronic return by mail, fax, or secure portal. This is a statewide accessible vote by mail program in Colorado, and it's called Electronic Ballot. And again, this link will be available in the follow-up email. And today, actually, we filmed a tutorial video with the Secretary of State with a step-by-step -step process on using the electronic ballot. So we should be able to get that out to everybody uh, next week before your ballots are mailed out. So this is something that I was just learning about myself, and it's great information that I think a lot of people can benefit from. So we'll be able to get more info on that, but you can also uh, view that right now through the Secretary of State page under Accessible Voting page. And then Voters with Disabilities, uh, can vote electric ballots independently and privately from their own home or other locations. You can request an electronic ballot during the 22 days before and on election day. Your ballot application and a copy of the identification, if you did not sign your application, must all be returned together, and your materials must be received no later than 7 p.m. on election day. And just one more to really uh, hammer this home is the deadline to return your ballot. It must be received by 7 p.m. on November 5th. 
and returning a printed ballot, print the marked ballot and check it to make sure it's marked correctly. Follow the instructions to complete and sign any forms, seal the ballot in an envelope, and then you can return that ballot by mail at a secure drop box or at any ballot drop off location. And now returning your ballot electronically, you have the option for electronic ballot return and you do this through the secure portal at the Secretary of State's office, and you have an option for electronic ballot return, either by email or by fax. The system in, in use in Colorado for accessible voting by mail are, uh, you can get these details through Democracy Live, Omni Ballot Portal, and that's an accessible system for voting by mail, delivers and returns ballot through a secure online portal, creates a paperless uh, facsimile, which is the same a ballot that's a hand marked paper ballot of tabulation, and there are options for large print and mail in ballots. And it's also a website accessible guideline uh, accessible and should work with your accessibility technology that you have on your computer, such as JAWS or other voice to text screen reader compatibility. So it's pretty cool. And again, there will be more, it'll be a lot more comprehensively covered on the Secretary of State's web page and also in the tutorial video that we'll be able to share next week. And then I think we'll wait for questions until the very end. And I know that was a lot of info, but just kind of a real quick overview of accessible voting. And again, everything that we covered here will be links in the follow-up email to dive in. And then of course, reach out to any of the organizations that are helping out with this event tonight or your ele local election office or secretary of state for questions and everyone is happy to help and make sure that we're feeling prepared on election day. And next, I'm going to hand it off to Hani with the Arc of Aurora. You got it. Thank you, Craig. Um, so happy to be here with such fabulous humans, all excited and interested in getting out the vote. Uh, so I'm going to pull up some slides as well. I'm Hani Raley. I'm the executive director of the Arc of Aurora and Think Change. Getting there. All right. So I will tell you that this uh, mini presentation is part of a much larger presentation and training package that Think Change and the Arc of Aurora, Think Change is our social enterprise, uh, put together all around election basics. Uh, there's a training, there is a talk series like little mini documentaries, and you can get to all of it through the QR code that you'll see a few times throughout the presentation. Uh, but ultimately, our um, organization, along with our allied disability organizations, want to remind everyone that your vote is your voice, nothing about us without us. Fannie Lou Hammer was a famous um, voters' rights um, American activist, and she said it best, when I liberate myself, I liberate others. If you don't speak out, ain't nobody going to speak out for you. We feel like this really centers the concept of voting and why it's so important. But here's why it's important that people with disabilities come out and vote. In fact, people with disabilities are a pretty large voting block. 38 million people with disabilities are eligible to vote. Um, 15.8 million citizens with disabilities reported voting in the November 2022 elections. But if people with disabilities voted at the same rate as people without disabilities who have the same demographic characteristics, there would be nearly 2 million more voters. That's a lot of voters and could absolutely turn an election. But like you heard earlier from many of my esteemed colleagues, voting is a civil right. Uh, the democratic process means that citizens actively participate in the decision making of the government. And as an American, you have the right to vote. Guardianship, like Sarah said, doesn't remove your right to vote in Colorado. And while the law does not require citizens to vote, voting is an important process of any democracy. By voting, you are essentially participating in the democratic process. You have a right to the accommodations that you need to get the help and to get the access for things that you need to be able to vote effectively. So what could be on your ballot? I say could 
um, tentatively because everyone's ballot is going to look different, especially because we live across this, this large state. And uh, many local elections are happening along with the general election. But you might see federal candidates on the ballot, such as the president and vice president, US representatives, which are sometimes called the House or House of Representatives. There's actually 435 representatives in total, representing all states, including delegates and commissioners from US territories. But each state's number of representatives is determined by the population. Representatives serve a total of two years, but can be reelected. U.S. senators also support the federal government with a six-year term. There's 100 senators, two from each state, and they too write and vote on new laws and approve and reject some actions that the president um, might offer. While all of these elected officials work for the people of the United States, they do most of their work in Washington, D.C. You might also see state candidates on the ballot, such as governor or lieutenant governor, not this year, or the attorney general, or district attorneys, secretary of state, the state treasurer, state senators, and state representatives doing similar jobs, but more local to your geographical area. You might also see state board of education uh, candidates, as well as state board of regents. There's going to even probably be some hyperlocal candidates on your ballot, including county candidates, municipal candidates such as city council or mayors, uh, local school district candidates, special districts, and even local judges. There's a lot that's going to be on your ballot this year, including some measures um, and initiatives. So it's not just candidates that you're going to see on your ballot, but also some important issues that will absolutely impact community living. Citizens of Colorado may initiate legislation as either a state or statu statute or a constitutional amendment. But don't worry, it's a process. And I'm not going to go through each one of these steps here tonight. We have no time for that. But you should know that everything that ends up on your ballot requires multiple stops. So it's a very thoughtful process. And in the end, it makes sure that everything on your ballot meets similar standards. You might hear the concept of down ticket or down ballot voting. This describes voting for offices listed below maybe what you might consider the most important, often typically national, um, or like the presidential election, all of those kind of races that you'll see on your ballot. Sometimes lower profile candidates, judges, or issues can be missed, especially if we skip them and just go to the big races. But your local candidates and local measures matter, and often they impact your daily life more than you might think. While you don't need to vote for everything on the ballot, you do have to have your vote or to have your vote count. Remember that down ballot issues and candidates on your ballot make an impact on you and your community. So what do the issues and the titles mean that you'll see? You'll see words like amendment and initiatives or propositions. Amendments are proposed changes to the Colorado Constitution. Initiatives are measures proposed through a petition of eligible electors. Initiatives intend to amend or add to the Colorado Constitution or Colorado statutes. Proposition is a proposed statutory change to the Colorado Revised Statutes. Ballot questions referred by the General Assembly, those folks under the Colorado Golden Dome, are listed by letter, and ballot questions initiated by the people are listed numerically. A yes or a four vote on any ballot question is a vote in favor of changing current law, and a no or against vote on any ballot question is a vote against changing current law or existing circumstances. In Colorado this year, we have 14 different um, propositions, amendments available for you to consider. If you take a peek at the QR code to the left, and it will also be included in the materials that'll come out through an email, you'll see a recent uh, 
ballot breakdown that offers some plain language guidance on what each amendment uh, proposition uh, means, what a yes vote means, and what a no vote means. We'd love for you to take a peek here so that you feel more comfortable down ballot voting. But in summary, you've heard today that you can vote, that there are definitely timelines to register and absolutely timelines to get your ballot in. There's gonna be contests for offices and measures on your ballot, but don't worry, there's lots of resources to help. If anything, reach out to those resources to be able to figure out a plan for you to be able to get your ballot in on time. Register, use your vote and use your power because your vote is your voice, nothing about us without us. Thanks for joining. Don, I'm gonna kick it back to you. Thank you so much, Hadi and the other, um, other presenters. Now it's the opportunity to ask questions. I don't see questions in the chat. So um, do anybody, does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask questions? Nothing is too basic. Brent. Yes, this is from Sarah. When will the mail, when will the ballots be mailed out? I believe yeah. it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Don, did you have a, something to add? I think oh. it's October. I have it on my calendar. They can begin to be counted twenty on uh, October twenty first. They'll begin to be mailed on October eleventh. Okay. Thank you. Every county is a little bit different, though, so they can begin to be mailed on the eleventh. But depending on your county, it might not um, come right away. How about the metro area? Don't know exactly, but I I imagine they'll be pretty on time, October eleventh. Okay. And Brett, the uh, blue book, that huge book that you often get that helps you kind of walk through all of the different measures is intended to be delivered 22 days prior to the election. So if you I haven't got received it already, so did I before my ballot landed. Yeah. Good news. So. Don, are we going to talk about the blue book or is that too complicated? We can just say that every registered voter will receive a blue book. And, um, and there's also an audio version of the blue book that may be helpful for some people. Um, so um, I encourage people to use the variety of resources, Blue Book, all the resources that we've mentioned this, um, this evening, um, the plain language um, guide to be an informed, competent voter. Hi, thank you. This is very helpful information from all of you. Um, and you kind of answered one of my questions is, well, I guess want to know how I could get the electronic copy of the Blue Book because oftentimes a lot of the amendments and propositions I, I may not understand. So um, it, uh, did you all talk about who we could call about that and we would go over the Blue Book to find out about those amendments. And then two, the second part of the question is, if you don't understand and you skip it, do they still count your vote if you vote at least for the main ones, which would be the presidents and all of that, will they still count your vote if some of the answers are skipped? 
They do, Catrice. They'll vote. They will count anything that you uh, you do vote for. So whether you cast it um, in person or uh, through mail, anything mm -hmm. you color in that that little bubble for will count. So okay. Another, <clears throat> in other words, if I fill out my entire ballot except for for two two options, will they still count my vote? Yes. Okay. I was wondering if, about that or if we're being validated. So. Yes, I did. Catrice, I dropped um, in the chat if you're able to see, but this will come through on the email with all of the materials that we've shared today. Oh, great. OK. Uh, the ballot guides that is kind of reduces a 80 plus page blue book down to a two page document. So a place Perfect. to start, but there's lots of different information out there and other organizations that are providing guidance as well around initiatives that are important to them and their constituents. Once you get signed up for that blue book electronically, do you, are you there for, you know, as long as you're registered or do you have to do it every year, get signed up for that electronic it, version? It follows your, um, so, so what I just dropped in here is something that we create each year. So you can sign mm -hmm. up for our Think Change newsletter, which I'll send okay. to in the email. Okay. Um, the blue book follows your voter registration. So that big book that comes in the mail um, yeah. will come to wherever a ballot is being delivered. Um, so if ever you move, it's important to make sure you're updating your uh, voter registration. Okay, but the electronic one, you have to sign up for that every year. I mean, every four years or whatever. Is that true? Uh, the one that, that our organization uh, built does come through our newsletter, so you don't have to sign up for it every year. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll look for that. Thank you. Of course. And I'll, I'll make sure that a link to the audio version of the Blue Book is in the resources that we send to people who sign up to receive the follow-up email. I appreciate that. Thank you. These are great questions. Does anybody else have questions? I don't. I don't hear any more questions. So I just want to thank you again for being with us tonight and taking the time to learn. Um, don't hesitate to reach out and um, use the resources available, but make sure that you understand that voting is your right and you have the right to make decisions uh, that it's right for you. Um, and thank you. Have a lovely evening.